So I guess we should look at how we can prepare the ultimate herbal infusion. But before we get into how to do that, I think it's important to just distinguish between what we're doing here and other methods, because obviously there's lots of different ways we can infuse herbs, lots of different techniques, and it all boils down to which herbs we're using and what the desired outcome is, you know? But broadly speaking, we've got very potent medicinal herbs with very direct actions, and they may have some uh, constituents in them that are not actually that good for us to consume in large quantities. So, you know, that's a completely different scenario than what we're going to be dealing with in this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at a method for infusing herbs that have a more adaptogenic nature. You know, herbs that are actually pretty safe to consume for all constitutions in the higher range of dose over a longer period of time. You know, they're more like foods that we can consume on a regular basis because they're so loaded with dense nutrients and very safe water-soluble constituents that are just very nourishing to us. So uh, we're going to be really thinking much more about that kind of a preparation. So this is really more uh, a way of replacing any nutritional supplements that you're taking, you know. You don't want to be taking like a multivitamin pill. When we're looking at isolated nutrient supplements or we're looking at synthetically made nutrient supplements, this is really just bullshit really. It doesn't really work the way it's marketed to work because often when we have active ingredients that are said to give X, Y, and Z health benefits, always in nature we have a vast number of accessory nutrients and th these like micronutrients that are barely even detectable, but when we remove all of these things, we see that the active ingredient doesn't actually behave the same way. It's not really that active anymore, and all those health benefits that we've read about or heard about, they're not really available in that form. So when we're using a whole herbal medicine like this, uh, we're really getting the full benefit because all of those active ingredients are there all of these micro accessory nutrients are there. So you're getting the entire package of what that herb has to offer in a water soluble format at least. So in this video we're going to be using nettle leaf. And the reason why we would do that is because nettle is just insanely nutritious. It's got so many vitamins and minerals and other nutrients in there. But you know, not only that, it's, it's, a, it's an adaptogenic tonic medicine. So it's very, very good for the kidneys and the adrenals. Uh, not only from a Western perspective, but from an Eastern perspective, we see that nettle leaf actually pacifies the wind element internally. Now, when we're coming from the perspective of Tibetan medicine, that wind element would be referred to as lung. If we're coming from the perspective of Indian Ayurvedic medicine, it's called vata. But it's all basically the same thing. Now, the wind element is very closely tied into the way that our mind is working, the activity of the mind, amongst other things. But we see how this relates to the adrenals, because nettle has an effect on our adrenals of regulating our stress response. And in Eastern medicine, the wind element when we have an excess of it is very much down to like overthinking, getting stressed out, experiencing feelings of anxiety and these kind of things. So nettle's very good at pacifying all of this excessive mental activity and nourishing the kidney adrenal system. It's also very excellent for nourishing the entire digestive tract and it's an awesome adaptogenic medicine for the respiratory system as well, and all lung-related conditions that we can experience, you know, asthma being a really good example. So I don't want to go too much into nettle in this video, because I'll do a video on the health benefits of nettle leaf specifically very soon. This video I really wanted to focus more on how we can prepare a very deeply nourishing infusion of it, because most of the time you find when people are consuming nettle in like a herbal tea, they're taking it, maybe they're taking it as a dried herb and they're infusing it in their teapot or maybe they're using tea bags or whatever. Normally what we find is it's not getting infused for more than 20 minutes. You know, 20 minutes would be like the maximum time it's getting infused and the amount being used is really, really small. 
And really, if we want to get the full nutritional benefit from stinging nettle, we want to be infusing much more of it over the course of about four hours at least. But we need to make sure that when we're using nettle, it's dried. So if you've harvested it yourself, make sure you dry it first before you make this kind of preparation. Or if you're buying it, obviously, you know, you're more likely going to be buying it dried. And the reason why it needs to be dried is because the drying process breaks down all of that cellulose, all of the cell walls of the plant, basically, and what's within that cell is revealed. It's open for water-soluble extraction. So when we dry it, we're getting all of that medicine through this kind of a process. Do exactly this with fresh nettles, you're going to end up with water that's clear after four hours, and it just looks like clear water with nettle leaves floating in it, which is really no use to you. So when you make it with the dried leaves, it's a completely different scenario. So the first thing we need is a kilner jar or some kind of glass jar that has an airtight rubber seal around the lid, you know, that we can completely seal and there's nothing getting in, there's nothing getting out. So we open it up, get your dried nettle leaf, And we're going to put quite a lot in. We're basically going to put enough in so that we've got, you know, maybe, maybe about a quarter full. The jar will be about a quarter full. So whatever size jar you're using, fill it like one quarter of the way. Now, we need to add the hot water, but before we can do that, we have a little trick here. Now you notice this is on a wooden surface, okay? This is very, very important because if it's on, say, this kitchen worktop, this is actually very cold all the time, you know? Most kitchen worktops are very cold, especially if you have like a stone or marble kitchen worktop, it's always going to be very cold. When you fill this with boiling water, the heat and the cold react together and what often happens is that you have the glass crack and everything goes everywhere and it's a nightmare. So if you put it on a wooden surface, wood is much more of a neutral temperature and it's going to absorb a lot of the heat out of the glass. It's, it's not going to, it's going to heat up basically with the glass. So it's not going to pose this polarized temperature that's going to break the glass. And what we can do is a, a second step towards ensuring that that doesn't happen is we get like a, a metal kitchen utensil like this. We, it needs to be very, very long and it needs to have a part that we can hold that's not going to be in the hot water so that we don't end up burning our hands. So we put this in that way around and then we add the hot water. And so this kitchen utensil that we've put in there, sorry, try not to make a mess like I'm doing. It's these iron cast saucepans, they pour really badly. But uh, the reason why this metal utensil is in there is again, it's heat conductive, so it's going to absorb some of the heat. So it's taking heat away from the glass and actually allowing us to pour this hot water in with minimal risk of the glass breaking. To be honest, I broke a few of these jars when I first started making this kind of infusion. Since putting it on a wooden surface using this metal utensil, I haven't broken a single glass and I've done it many, 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 many times. So this is a very, very safe way of doing it. So we want to basically fill it up, you know, like I just did, give it a stir so you don't have loads of dried herbs stuck at the very top. And before you finish pouring, yeah, you give it a stir, top it up, and you want to go all the way to where the rings start near the lid of the jar. At that point, close the lid, airtight seal, and we're going to leave that for about four hours at least. Now, what I normally do, do this at night time before you go to bed, leave it overnight so that as soon as you get up in the morning, it's going to be ready to use. Okay, cool. So after cleaning up all the mess I made, uh, here's what I did last night. So this one's ready to strain off already, and you can see it's like basically black. 
It's so rich. And you're not going to get nettle tea this color by using a small amount and infusing it over a very short period of time. So you can see visually how rich and strong this is going to be. So it's really simple. Open it up. Sometimes you find that the suction on the lid is a little bit tight. If you just get like a butter knife or something and wedge it in there, it'll fly open. So you want to get a nice fine sieve strainer because if it's too, like if the holes are too big, uh, you're going to end up having a little bit of plant matter coming through. So you want to get something pretty fine and then just pour it through into a bowl. And then quite simply, I don't know, you use your hands or you use some other kind of utensil, but there's going to be a lot of tea still in all of this plant matter here. So give it a bit of a strain off. So after that whole process, what we're left with is this really dark, super nourishing liquid that we can use either cold, we could use it as a base for blended drinks we're having or whatever, or we can just gently warm it up again. There's really no need to boil it because it's already been boiled, it's already fully extracted, so we just need to warm it to the temperature that we want to drink it at. There's really no need to overcook it. Um, now, storing this, it's going to be good for a couple of days if you keep it, obviously you want to rinse that out, but you could store it back in here, what you haven't had, and you could put it in the fridge. It's going to be good for a couple of days in the fridge if it's kept in a very cool, dark place. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's going to go off pretty quickly. So a couple of days in the fridge is about the maximum shelf life you're going to get from this. But normally, you're not going to need that long. You're easily going to have something of this amount in one day, especially if there's more than one of you drinking it. But I think it's worth mentioning at this point that despite all of Nettle's adaptogenic properties, it, it is a bit diuretic, you know? So it is a very good tonic for the kidneys and the entire urinary system, but it does make you wee a little bit more than usual. You're gonna urinate a little bit more than you're used to if you're gonna be drinking nettle all throughout the day. So this really isn't a big deal. It's not an extreme uh, thing that you're gonna experience from drinking nettle, but you know, there may be some people who really do not want to lose any extra fluid this way. If that's the case, then you could still drink this infusion and get all of the benefits from it, but you wanna add a more moistening and demulcent herb into that infusion. So, you know, adding something like lime flowers or linden, it's also called, or you could add like marshmallow root or even marshmallow leaf, you know, they're very moistening, demulcent herbs that are gonna shave the edge off that diuretic nature that nettle has. So as you can see, that's like super easy. It's really quick and simple to make, like anybody could do it. And it's the best possible way to nourish yourself on a regular basis. You know, no need for buying expensive nutrient supplements or all of this kind of thing. I mean, obviously you may have a condition that requires a specific nutrient, but like I said earlier, these nutrients in nature, they always work in conjunction with accessory micronutrients that are very seldom present in supplements that we buy. So taking it from a natural whole herbal source is always, always going to be our best option.